Welcome back, League Nighters. We are doing another swing breakdown today. We got a guy that has been coming up over the last few years. Again, not a guy that you've seen over the last 10, but over the last few, Tyler Irvine. You're seeing some swings here in the background. This guy absolutely mashes the ball. He's got some crazy stats this year. We're gonna take a look at some of these swings, gonna break them down a little bit, but first, Jay's gonna give us some stats on this guy and they are gaudy. Yeah, so as you mentioned, he has had a stellar 2022 season. Uh, he was the 2022 Conference U Triple SA home run champion. Oof. And it wasn't even, it wasn't even close. Uh, a guy that we know who has immense power, who we've talked about and broken his swing down, Ryan Harvey was second place. He beat him by 36 home runs this year. Oof. It wasn't like it was close. He's the undisputed <laughs> champ this year. How many does it take to be the undisputed champ? Oh, 150. Yeah. No, no joke. 150 home runs this season. That is a lot. 39% of the time, 39% of the time, he hit a home run wow. when he come to the plate. Two out of every five ABs was left the yard. That's just silly. It's about as automatic as you can get, I think. <laughs> 756 on base percentage so it wasn't like he was only a home run guy he got on yeah. three at every four times too so really helped his team to the double a world's championship yeah it was very impressive for competitive edge uh double a team who ran into our bay area legends and unfortunately for us and our buddy brandon trailer <laughs> and laser dave they got taken down but uh you know these guys got some offensive firepower and sure. irvine is at the head of that uh the head of that team there yeah for sure. Any guess on his RP7? A number that we've checked out a lot of other guys for? Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a good guess, but I can, I guarantee you it's 30 plus. <laughs> Try 57 and a half. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that's got to be the best we've seen. That has to started. be. Wow. Yeah, and it's not like it's over a small set, right? The guy had probably 370 ish at bats this year. RP7 at 57 and a half is insane. That's crazy. That explains why he was both the double A and major world's offensive MVP. Yeah, I think he probably earned that. <laughs> <laughs> he was also a six time all tourney team, including the major world series all tourney. Uh, he was the 2022 home run champ, like I mentioned. He was also the cut for sports major offensive MVP earlier this year. Overall, the guy was just an offensive juggernaut this yeah. season. Got a little, a few accolades there. Uh, so I think you guys are probably tired of hearing about all the accolades. You want to see why? So <laughs> he's got a long list and we're going to show you why he does what he does and how he gets all those. So uh, let's take a look. All right. So we are going to take a look here at this first swing. This one definitely got the best view so we can kind of really see what's going on here. So let's look at it here. Just see it in motion. Big swing there. Viewers, if you don't think we're listening to the comments, this is proof. Yes, you yes, we're gonna, it, you get what you want. <laughs> we're gonna see it a few times here. So, full speed, big swing, taking that thing deep, and uh, again, pretty much a no doubter. Been done out there in center field, having to bail out so that way he doesn't fly into the wall trying to chase that thing down. So, uh, big swings he's, here from he's Tyler. He's taking the goat deep right here. This is the goat, Andy That's Purcell. Right. That is just a loud pitcher, so. Yeah, this is greatest of all time as we know it. Just recently uh, announced his retirement, so congratulations to him on a great career. Uh, but I digress. So we're gonna take a look here <laughs> back at Tyler. A couple things to notice right off the bat, standing up real tall, nice and easy, nice and relaxed. Doing that little handshake, a lot of those pros do. I assume that's just to keep the, the wrists loose. I see a lot of those guys do that. So he's just staying loose. He's got a little bit of a front toe tap, I think, just to maybe keep his timing or just, you know, it could always just be habit, just keeps you in the groove. So, but either way, nice and relaxed here. Sees the pitch coming in, still staying relaxed. Right there, probably a third of the way into the pitch. It looks like he's making his decision on, hey, I'm gonna go after this one. About the halfway point, he's taking that step, fully loaded on the back foot, making his step. Not a massive step here as far as total length compared to his body size, but this guy is also massive, so he's a huge dude. So <laughs> even though that doesn't look like a big step, that's, you know, that's probably a three and a half or a better foot step right there. His back foot looks like it's maybe even a little behind the elbow of the, of the plate, and he's stepping on the line of the front of the box. So pretty big there. Uh, by the time he makes contact, 
full extension on that front foot or front leg rather. Uh, Lean back just a hair, so probably making himself a little room to get barrel on that ball and then just driving through it. So uh, what are you seeing when, uh, what's standing out to you on the swing like this, Jay? I mean, the first thing that I'll notice that's a little different and it could be just because he's an absolute monster is he's a little further back yeah. from the plate than most people are as far as like that front line of the box. But again, he's got to be what, 6'4", maybe? Yeah, he's, um, he's a big dude. So that could be why he's able to stand back a little further. Uh, like you said, quiet hands. You know, he's got that little wrist flick. A lot of that, I think, uh, people do that too to prevent them from getting uh, caught off guard with the deeks. Yeah, they just do that and they just keep doing that until the pitch comes. So it's a way for them to counteract all the you know you triple a say dancing on the on the mound by pitchers. <laughs> yeah, so you see, I mean, we saw Nino who does it almost as like aggressively as anybody I've seen where he gets the bat at least flat, if not almost pointing down. So a lot of them do it. And I assume it's probably, like you said, partially just a timing thing. Yeah. And another thing is just to, to not get out of rhythm until the pitch comes. He, he had a little bit of a squat, which was interesting to me. He gets that really big leg kick that you see here. Yep. Kind of loads up that low. back leg and he, he drops the hips a little bit. And I wonder if maybe it's because this pitch maybe came in a little lower than because I mean, you look at contact point is yeah or even mid thigh so you may be loading down to get down to that because he doesn't have quite the normal flat bat path that you typically see yeah um and that could be just a result of him standing further back but if he was a baseball player you know that's a happy zone for a baseball yeah. player with a little yeah. bit of up cut um but yeah great hands to the ball you really see the head barrel like looking right down the barrel of the bat too so he's got yeah. great eye discipline uh, chin goes shoulder to shoulder, which is just textbook to keep that head down so he's not pulling off early. Great front leg lockout at the back. Um, really throws his hips all the way through it. And you'll see his body come even just a, a little bit more than that full turnaround, which is just showing how much he's throwing that weight through the swing. And uh, yeah, again, to your point here, this one is a little bit more of an upper quote unquote uppercut than we have seen from some of the other guys. And again, you're right, probably because of where the pitch location is. But one thing to note, even though he's swinging at a low pitch with an upward trajectory, check out where this bat ends up. So bat's right here, right? Nice and easy, comes through. And then on the backside, that's still a flat plane. So he's still swinging flat, but he's angled his flat, right? So unlike a lot of the baseball players, like you said, that will actually get kind of a little bit of a U-shape in their swing. He's still keeping that super flat plane, just like you need to do in softball. So I'm sure he's getting a bit of a cut, some backspin on this thing too, but he was able to adjust his angle of his flat swing to again, shoot that thing up and out, right? He has to get that launch angle somehow. So <laughs> got it there. If you look at the, the freeze pane that you've got here too, I think this is the perfect demonstration of how you talk about top hand dominance at the contact point. Mm -hmm. That's the snap that everybody talks about when they talk about having that snap of the wrist in softball, getting out. That's why you want to catch it early out in front of the plate because you're able to get the hands through and then really snap because you switch from that bottom hand dominance of driving the knob to the ball and you're then getting from here, right? Where you're <laughs> pushing the hand forward to then getting the top hand to snap yeah. through. And you really see how that top hand, which is, you know, the top hand on the barrel, but it actually is the bottom hand from the angle we're looking at. Right. You can really tell the from this angle hand. that it's pushing, it's pushing through the swing, which is really helping generate that bat whip. And this and so is, that's going to just give them that extra bat speed at contact. Exactly. Yeah. And this is, we just <laughs> happen to get the right frames here, but you can mm -hmm. see here, a big thing is look where his hands are. Just note his position. I'm going to put my cursor right on it and then look where the bat the actual bat head is and the next frame forward his hands basically are in the same place you know in space but look mm -hmm. how far that bat head is has moved so that's a really good example of what a whip does right you get to that point where your whole body's moving but then your wrists take over and create that that extra bat speed that extra head speed there and flying through and this is a mm -hmm. great example of that there so and even on that next frame he he hasn't moved his wrist too far out of position a little bit there but that bat head is just flying through that's easily the bat head speeds the fastest during those three fame frames right there which yep. is what you want because it's right at the point of contacting the ball so again creating the other thing that i've started 
to realize from watching a lot of these guys swing and you know just taking some practice swings in the batters or in the on deck circle as mm -hmm. well is taking the top hand off at follow through allows you to continue to twist and use your hip rotation through mm -hmm. the swing more. Mm -hmm. If you keep both hands on it, you're gonna get to the point where your body is almost preventing yourself from fully opening the hips. Yeah. You know, you'll notice all these guys, they're swinging and taking their top hand off the bat because that allows their hip rotation to continue through the swing and they're not kind of naturally slowing themselves down as their back hand gets to the point of being fully across the body. Yeah, and I would argue maybe this frame, hard to see here. He's probably still holding on there, but by this one here, definitely not there. Again, hard to see, but he's definitely has let go at that point. So again, mm -hmm. by the time he gets that rotation, I think what a lot of people don't realize, again, I teach this to kids too, that when they're letting go on this right here, this is after the swing has happened. So it's actually letting go is not directly affecting his swing and his power, but what it's doing mm -hmm. is if he knows he's gonna let go and that's his muscle memory, he can keep his momentum through the beginning part because he knows just from muscle memory that he's got all this extra time to slow down. So he doesn't have to slow the bat down too early, which again, I see that mistake a lot with you know younger players or players that haven't played a lot. They'll start slowing their bat down. And if at all possible, you don't wanna slow it down at all. You want it to Ever, just yeah. <laughs> fly through and just slow down naturally on its own, right? You want it to, to naturally go all the way through, swing as hard as you can, and just let it go down when it goes down. So again, really great example of that here. Obviously a huge bomb there, but again, as we've seen with a lot of these guys, he's got it almost locked out here. He may have it locked out. It's hard to see his knee there uh, at the point of contact, but he's definitely got it locked by right after contact. So again, bracing against that front leg, all that energy came forward and is being held back by that leg so he can push against it to throw that bat head out there. So, And you really, if you watch his front plant leg too, you can see how much he's violently twisting those hips because the plant leg's gonna move further left, which is just showing you the continued rotation of those hips through the completion of the swing. Yeah, it's, it's throwing him all the way around. And again, the nice thing is that that the ball's already gone, right? It's already off the bat. So if this happens afterwards, that doesn't throw off anything as far as the swing but it allows you to keep going through which again i think is what a lot of these big hitters leverage they leverage that so and this is the thing you have to practice too you know i know i'm not great at it i'm sure you're not great at it either but <laughs> this is a thing that you can't just go out there and just decide you're going to swing full boat and it's going to work every time this is a thing they practice so definitely get out there and practice that if this is something you want to add to your game that way you don't just go out there and throw it in on the first time you try it. Regardless of whether you want to be a home run hitter like her, hit absolute bombs, you know, that's for some people, not for other people. Yeah. Every single person is going to want to learn about this next swing. Yeah. Every single person should have this swing in their bag, regardless of the style of hitter you are. Absolutely. Let's take a look at it. All right. So we are going to take a look at a second swing here. Now this one's a little bit reminiscent of uh, last week's video <laughs> with Laser Dave. Uh, this is an example of just an insane cut swing as well. You could call it a laser, uh, but uh, <laughs> he absolutely just smokes this ball. So let's watch it in full speed a couple of times. That way we can just kind of see what it looks like. This, this is absolutely amazing to me. This is an insane, <laughs> insane hit. So let's take a look at it here. Same nice and easy hands, but look at this ball. That ball, I mean, what did you say? Those trees are maybe 30, 40 feet 30. tall. <laughs> like it was maybe three quarters of the way up that tree. So like barely yeah, that was gets just up silly. There. It's absolutely insane. And the ball the goes <laughs> just forever. Like watch the shortstop's reaction. He doesn't even know. He's just like, wow. Yeah, he's like, I don't, right I, there. I, I don't know what we do he's there. Like, Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, just absolutely God. destroys it. And again, probably hits that ball, I don't know, 350 feet on a line, which yeah, someday I would love <laughs> to be able to do that, but uh, I'm not sure I'm ever gonna have the physical skills to quite do that. So let's break it down a little bit here. Same thing as we saw before, nice and relaxed. Um, he's got that, we didn't really mention it in the first one, but you can kind of see it uh, a little easier here. He does have a bit of an open stance. So he does have that front mm -hmm. foot a little bit open um, and then he kind of closes it up in his step, but nice and relaxed, standing tall, hands relaxed, ball coming in. 
right here. So about halfway. So again, this is maybe a little bit later than his uh, the previous one we looked at. He's making that decision a little bit later in the pitch to make that cut swing. So this is maybe halfway at its apex here. Gets loaded up, gets a slight twist backwards, but a ton of forward motion. One thing I notice here too, just like we talked about in our cut swing video with trailer, keeps the hands high, right? He's got a cut down on the ball. So he keeps high, comes actually body down while hands stay up by his neck, maybe by his ear even here, and then just cuts through that ball super hard. And again, by the time it's going out of the infield, which didn't take long, it's probably only 20 feet off the ground. So uh, pretty wild there. So uh, what are you seeing on a swing like this? First off, it does look like he might be a smidge closer to the pitcher than the previous swing. So you know, he's definitely going to catch it a lot higher yep. in the uh, the body, which is great. He, like Brandon says in the cut swing video, you really have to go out and get the ball, right? You yeah. have to go attack it and you really see him going to get it. Love the hand position at that that spot right there. So hands super high. They're at or above his ear right here, right? Yeah. So he's really starting that cut plane really, really high. And then as you go frame by frame, watch just how aggressively those hands are coming down, but his head stays on the ball so well. So you see as he's coming down, instead of flat, his head just stays super disciplined on the ball. And you even see the negative decline there when his hands get through his belly button and you see them come out the backside, just how aggressively his hands and his arms are pointing down through follow through really generate that really solid back cut swing getting all that backspin going and man, that thing just takes off. It does, that's, it went so fast. Like that's what's so crazy. It's just <laughs> the the speed in which it leaves the park on this. Now again, I don't know this park, so I'm not exactly sure what the what the distance is, but again, we can guarantee if it's a major, it's at least 300, um, mm -hmm. could be like 315, three and a quarter uh, in, in a corner like that, but just absolutely destroys this ball. And just like Jason was saying, look how high these hands are. I mean, they're, they're basically, at his hat, they're like above his head almost. Like, and the bat mm -hmm. head is above his head. So again, hard cut, an absolute just missile, just flying off that bat. And again, you can see like even there after the follow through, and again, you can see the let go. He's just got one hand on it now. He's still like, his body is still pointed like in that downward position of, I mm -hmm. that he was hard cutting that ball. So again, it's a, it's a full motion you know, from before the, the ball gets there to after the ball gets there, it's that hard, stay high, get low, cut down type of swing. And again, backspin forever, just stays up in the air and just flies out of the park like that. It's just absolutely insane. <laughs> uh, he's also happens to be swinging, shout out to Suncoast and, uh, and Brandon, he's swinging uh, the competitive edge uh, Suncoast Ruckus, which is I think him and a few of other teammates uh, all had kind of a signature team bat there uh, by Suncoast. And I think he's got one coming out of his own in uh, 2023 for for uh, Suncoast as well. So pretty cool that he's he's got that now. I'm sure they're going to get a lot more attention now that they've won a bunch of stuff and <laughs> gone deep in, uh, <laughs> in Worlds as well. So um, let's just take a look at it again. Here it is in a little bit slower motion just to see it. Just a ridiculous cut there. Thanks. Just silly i know this is this is something i have to add to my toolbox for sure but uh it's definitely going to take a little bit more work i've been working on it a little bit but i certainly don't have anything of this level so any final words on this no i think his uh his swing speaks for itself all right so that is our breakdown of tyler irvine absolutely insane hitter ton we can learn from this guy so uh, i definitely recommend everybody taking a close look at these swings and seeing what you can glean from these. Definitely want to say congratulations to Tyler and Competitive Edge for all the, such a great season. Again, winning AA Worlds and don't quote me on this, but they were top, they may have been in top two for, uh, for uh, Worlds in general too. So absolutely great, great, great season for them. And of course he had a great season too, leading in home runs, getting a ton of tournament offensive MVPs and all that. So uh, great for him. We appreciate you guys sticking around, watching another one with us. Make sure to like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, check out some of our other videos and playlists. We really appreciate it, and we will see you guys next time.